hello and welcome to the armorer with me blue and today i want to show you what i've been brewing up with prism so far uh in a game against vincent feel free to leave suggestions and or questions down in the comments uh, that you have about the list and let's get started so vincent starts first with a widespread ruin uh thrown against me and here i'm just going to drop uh, a Genesis, uh, leaving Merciful Retribution in my hand um, and just take the, the entirety of the damage. I'm pretty happy about this because this means that during my turn I'm going to at least have two auras and he should be happy as well because that's like 7 free damage that I did not uh, block. Um, and I'm also happy because the Genesis is going to trigger now because I'm going to draw first and then Genesis is going to trigger I'm going to put this Erudition into the soul. Uh, in order to fetch myself uh, a uh, haze bending, which is probably the best card you see, and turn two, we have the three best stores on the field, and our opponent is now kind of uh, stuck, uh, and that's the thing that we want to abuse about Vincent, or like at least try to abuse, is that her cards do not have natural go again, so she needs to see her go again enablers in order to attack uh, more than once and here uh, she's just going to attack into the genesis which is completely fine because we have we have three hours on the field and we have a bunch of soul right now i'm just going to attack uh, for eight here and then uh, present a hero to audition uh, which is going to be very hard to block unless with the popper now that we see him just uh, shotgun his equipment on my first aura uh, which kind of makes sense uh, if uh, if he had a popper uh, i'm not sure if he, he has a popper uh, to be honest I mean, he's, he's, he's probably having a popper, but the, the thing here is that even with the popper that he just used right now, uh, Merciful Retribution is going to allow us to trigger uh, the effect and fetch a uh, erudition figment, which is going to draw us a card and deal damage because of the ponder giving us a um, giving us a ALS uh, a Sentinel in the arsenal. Uh, he's going to attack into Merciful Retribution and here in response I'm just going to drop another Merciful Retribution. The reason why I do not drop a ALS immediately is because uh, if you can, you want to avoid mixing uh, the Sentinel and Merciful Retribution because uh, Merciful Retribution is going to make your Sentinel go into the soul and you kind of want to have at least one Sentinel in the graveyard in order to be able to retrieve it and cast it a few times with your NGO of Rebirth, which I believe we're going to do later in the game. Uh, what Vincent is doing right now is just banishing non-blood depth cards in order to just uh, create a wound chance and sell the wound chance uh, at, towards me. Here I'm going to just go for Sentinel once he kills my uh, first retribution. I'm not going to pay for the rune chance, I can't. During my turn I'm going to use the tunic and my sink below in order to threaten with a Herald of Triumph that is going to uh, prevent uh, poppers, as in like 6 power poppers. So it's going to be a big damage. Uh, the thing is that he can just block with a bunch of cards if he, if he can, because he only needs a few, uh, but he's just going to block with one card. So maybe he wants to set up this is what this tells me uh, but i'm just going to fetch the hero of rebirth right now uh, because i know that he has to now kill the als and it's going to go to the graveyard and next turn uh, with my fully blue hand i can just go for a few attacks into hero of rebirth into uh, into Herald of Rebirth, into retrieving the ALS. Uh, here I'm just going to trigger. Uh, just going to trigger the Halo because there's no reason for me to wait 
product Halo, there is no specific interaction that I want to pull off in this uh, in this game and I'm just going to use it right now and then use the remaining two materials to flip the Herald of uh, Rebirth. And during my turn I'm just going to attack with the Iris for 4, uh, after which I'm going to uh, use the Herald of Rebirth in order to put uh, the ALS, uh, the Sentinel, back on top of the deck, which is going to create a very beautiful loop. Uh, here we see he's going to use the defense reaction, creating even more long chance, which is kind of nice. I mean, uh, he is sending the long chance at my face while attacking my ores. Uh, so I'm just going to be taking residual damage every turn. Uh, but the thing is that the life lead is now gone, right? It's 24 to 22. We have managed to close the gap and we have quite a formidable field. We drew into a bunch of blues yet again, so we can just drop another ALS. And now he's just going to, you know, set up as we as we said by just uh, banishing a, uh, a, a room gate and uh, setting up with the tunic and this uh, ore that's going to be giving him a room chance every turn. During our turn we're going to go for the angel yet again setting up the ALS on top of our deck. Uh, the thing is, I believe this time I did not draw into uh, double blues again, which is kind of the <laughs> kind of what you want to do. Uh, but without double blues, I'll have to kind of drop the entirety of my hand uh, in order to put the ALS on the field. Uh, but then I won't be able to attack with the angel, so like regardless I'm giving him a turn where he can now start attacking me and he's going to use uh, enveloping darkness uh, which is just going to trade with my angel as well as uh, the rest of the uh, spectral shields uh, and this is kind of when uh, or where uh, Vincent and her ability shines. But the thing is that this hero of Rebirth, uh, Angel of Rebirth, actually, has done quite a lot up until now, right? Like, we've attacked with it twice, we've re retrieved the uh, ALS twice, uh, we have cast it once, but it's still in our hand. Uh, here we're just going to take the, take the damage and block uh, Block 6, take another 4. Uh, we have taken quite a lot of damage, uh, but I'm just going to drop uh, second haze bending, hoping that I will now draw into double blues for the sentinel, which was probably not right. Maybe I should have attacked with, uh, with the herald uh, from, from arsenal. Uh, at least using my tunic counter to attack with the hero for Marcelo instead of like keeping it for uh, ALS. The reason I'm, I'm I'm not casting ALS now again, I believe, is because even if I do, I'm, I'm just going to have a Wasis Respite during my turn, which is like not amazing. Like ideally, I want to cast ALS and then still be able to attack with something which is like three blues. Uh, the deck is running a lot of blues, but I guess not quite enough. Uh, I'm going to to prevent, I believe, the two arcane. Here I'm thinking a lot, but I think at the end of the day, I'm just going to prevent uh, as much damage as I can, allow him to hit me for one, uh, get rid of the ward in, in uh, arsenal that I should probably have gotten rid of the previous turn uh, and just putting the ALS there and now I would have been able to flush it so that's a major mistake on my part. I probably didn't notice that the tunic was uh, at three counters at that point but regardless of that uh, I'm just going to prevent the majority of the damage uh, and I'm going to use one of my angels to prevent uh, four. Uh, damage right now, uh, the erudition, I I'm not going to have a use for erudition uh, in the game most likely, uh, or at least the use is going to be less than uh, the use of um, protection, or at least that's what I think right now, 
Um, it is definitely debatable. Uh, Erudition is very cool because it allows you to uh, basically you can attack with it, draw cards, and then use these cards uh, to in order to cast your expensive things. Here we are going to ALS on his uh, Moverian Skies, which is very very good for us because we do want to uh, we do want to kind of get rid of as many of his uh, Gorkian enablers as possible. Here we're going to use the tunic in order to attack with the herald that's just going to get rid of a popper I'm guessing. Uh, but it's quite a good popper, it's one of his best attacks so we're pretty glad with that and we can just put the scene below. Uh, he, this is the last turn of his aura that is enabling some of his best turns. He's going to go for uh, Shadow Puppetry into Double in Darkness, which I'm not sure why he's playing it. But it doesn't matter, like Shadow Puppetry is a Shadow Attack, so it's just going to get rid of uh, all of my uh, shields. And I'm just going to block this for 3, I believe, uh, because I see that he banished uh, with this card a uh, widespread ruin. So I guess that's why they're playing it, uh, because it can kind of extend even more. Uh, I'm just going to allow it to hit and now with the Shadow Puppetry, he can like banish yet another card. But it doesn't matter already because he has uh, the Ruin. Uh, he's going to play a, uh, a Banshee. Uh, I'm not sure when he banished the Banshee. Kind of missed it now in the replay, but uh, this is kind of the dream, one of his biggest turns. So I'm just going to go into damage prevention again, just prevent, it, prevent as much damage as possible. I was hoping that with the scene below I'm going to be able to prevent uh, damage and then swing with uh, some of my... some of my uh, ores, uh, but instead I'm just going to prevent as much damage as possible and then uh, drop a uh, Shimmer. I'm hoping that now he, he will think of, um, of targeting the Shimmer, and if he doesn't, uh, just a couple of attacks with the Shimmer are going to grow to a point where he will have to start respecting me uh, off of just pitching one card. So here he's going to attack me with uh, the widespread ruin, uh, and, I, and I believe I'm just going to you know prevent the arcane damage and like block for six. Just prevent as much damage as possible, prevent the Moverian Sky Zone hit, and here he's just going to go with, uh, with uh, his zero attack uh, bonding Demigon from the Banish, which is a pretty decent turn, but I'm, I'm like, sure, I'll like take, I'll take four, because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start attacking for five, uh, basically, with my Shimmer. And I kind of have to be thinking about uh, pressuring my opponent now and how to win the game. Uh, because if I go into this way too defensive style, I'm inevitably going to be leaking damage off of the unblockable damage uh, Vincent can provide. So I'm just going on the offensive basically. And I'm, I'm waiting for a turn where they will have like almost nothing to do. And I believe it may be soon, uh, but it's, it's not yet, you know, he's attacking me for 9 again. And to be honest, 9 is not that much, but unfortunately he caught us on a red hand, so we have to take some arcane damage here, block 6 again, and uh, keep the faithful scene. Ideally, one of these angels would have been blue, uh, so that we can uh, use the... Um, uh, so that we can like maybe hold the blue in order to attack with the aura, uh, but you know he had more real skies. So basically, he attacked it again. We blocked it with the faithful scene. We blocked the more real skies fully. Now he's going for envelop in darkness. 
he's going to lose one life, making us lose one life as well. This time he does not have go again. So this is a turn where uh, I believe I'm going to try and uh, hold the blue in order to attack uh, with, uh, with the aura. I'm going to target the Phantom uh, with uh, my Wazis healing, taking the rest of the damage, and then I'm going to prevent another 4 with uh, Faithful Scene. Uh, I'm going to leave the Oasis on top. The previous turn I put Aegis on the bottom because I do not want to see these non blocks uh, right now. And we managed to hold two blues even during that turn because it was a turn where finally they did not have Gorgian enablers, which they do not turn that many of. I mean, he's probably running nine Movian Skies and then uh, triple Shadow Pop 3, but as you see at the beginning of the game, he was kind of forced to, I believe, punish off of Vincent uh, some of his uh, Movian Skies in order to not take prolonged blood death damage while he was clearing my must clear auras at the beginning. And here we're putting him down to 4, drawing again into a Oasis that we knew we had, and we still have a uh, Angel that we can use together with that Oasis in order to prevent essentially like 9 damage off of 2 cards, which is incredibly above rate. He's going to go for Enveloping Darkness into yet another Moveran Skies, into attacking me with... Um, a lot of rune chants and this... Uh, Deadly Whale. I cannot allow the Deadly Whale to hit, but I can definitely allow the Rune Chance to hit. And it's uh, two Rune Chance, I believe. Like one of them, I have to. Uh, it has to hit me because of uh, Vincent's ability. I cannot prevent it. And I believe I'm going to allow the other two to hit me uh, right now in order to drop down to. Um, 2 HP in order to be able to get the full value off of the Oasis Respite and uh, here the dude is telling me that he liked the game and the back and forth uh, and I'm just and I'm just thinking like how am I going to use my resources here and I think at the end of the day I'm going to Oasis uh, his his attack after I drop down to two off of the rune chance in order to get the full benefit. And then I'm going to use Brothers in Arms, uh, is blocking for eight. His attack is going to be for nine, and I really want to block it in order to not give him free rune chance for the next turn. Um, so I will then use my boots, I believe, here. So, yeah. Go down to two, pitch the two block. Now, I'm pitching the two block because this is a Movian Sky Storm and the, his card in Arsenal can potentially be another zero for three or like something weird like that. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking here, do I block with the tunic? Uh, but there's no reason. Uh, I'm just going to block with the boots. Uh, I'm not going to be using their effect uh, right now at all. So yeah, thinking a little bit more, blocking the boots, I'm completely fine with them being gone here, especially when the price is just like blocking out the red Movian skies. And we still have a blue, and that blue is going to attack for 7 I believe right now with the shimmer because he refuses to uh, deal with my shimmer and that's probably the correct thing uh, at this position, uh, because had he removed uh, the Shimmer, I would have uh, clipped uh, or like started attacking with uh, with the other auras, right? Like if he removes the, the, the Shimmer, I'm going to get uh, some shields and during my turn, I will, like on a 4 blue hand, I will be able to attack him for 12 or something like this, which is still insane amount of damage. This turn, uh, he punishes a Moon and he's going to activate the Moon. Uh, and I believe that's it. Like he he does not have an attack this turn. I mean, even if he did, right here we still have uh, an angel that we can use uh, during his turn in order to prevent damage. Uh, we still have uh, brothers in arms to block for four. We still have the tunic 
to block some as well and we have tons of block cards and we only need to continue attacking him with Shimmer because it's now 8 right? and he has a lot of 2 blocks as we see here so it's, it's going to become increasingly hard for him to uh, survive and in fact he will not survive this turn even if he had a 0 for 4 defense reaction here our last attack would have been with the angel that's it um, leave your comments down below and bye bye